Hey Scott, it's Maria from PH. I wanted to ask you 21 questions. Do you have some time? Hi Maria, how you doing? Great. Let me get right into it. What are you shooting today? Well, I actually just wrapped shooting. So uh, we just finished up doing a travel photography conference. That's why I'm on this set that looks like an adventure set here. So uh, this is actually in the corner of my photography studio. So that's what's going on here. It's like, uh, that's why I got like a telegraph and an old phone and all this kind of stuff to give that feeling of adventure for the, you know, for the travel look. So we literally just wrapped it up tonight. So that's what I'm here. But my, my actual photography studio is like right there. So what got you started in photography? Uh, in photography was, was my brother. I was inspired by my big brother. So my big brother is 11 years older than me and, and many years ago, um, he, he went and got some pictures uh, blown up to eight by 10 and he brought them home and he showed me these and I opened up the pictures and I'm looking at these and I'm like, look, I know you, there's no way you took these. Like, I'm like, oh my gosh, somebody I knew took these great pictures. My brother's got a great eye. And it really got me interested, like, wow, like here's somebody that I know and they're taking pictures like this. Maybe I could take pictures like this. And as it turned out, he uh, gave me my hand-me-down first camera and that's what got me into photography, was being inspired by my brother. It was like, it's just, it's just a guy I know, it's my bro, it's my brother. But wow, he's really good at photography and that really impressed me and left an impression on me. And what was your first camera? My first camera, the hand-me-down was a Minolta SRT-101. I still have it, it's sitting on the desk in my office, my home office, it's sitting right there. Yeah, Minolta SRT-101, great little camera actually. What's your go-to camera and lens now? Oh, well, I'm glad you asked that, uh, Maria, because just today, literally, while I'm here on the set, I gotta show you what came in. What? Oh, oh! I saw a big B&H box and what was inside? That's right. My, my, so this is my new travel camera. Well, this is really my, my main camera. This is the EOS R6, which is a mirrorless camera. I got that. And because I've been shooting a lot of aviation photos, I also grabbed, let me reach down here and get it. Whoa, it's big. The 150 to 600 Tamron for, for aviation. Uh, just a few weeks ago, I shot an air show and I used a 400. It's not enough. And all these guys that were shooting 500s and 600s, I'm looking at their shots and I'm like, yeah, I need a new lens. And this is the one, I think, uh, like a bang for the buck. It's really, really good. And a lot of people uh, that are shooting aviation, this is like their go-to lens. So those just came in today. I'm very excited to open my new stuff when I get home. You shoot so many styles from landscape to portrait. What's your favorite? You know, I, I guess I would have to say travel. Travel is probably my favorite because it mixes two things I love. I love travel. I just love to travel. I like to travel for work. I like to travel for fun. I just love to travel. So you take something that I already love and mix it with my love of photography, it makes a very strong bond. I'm gonna go with travel photography. Uh, also, I really love people. Like I'm a people person, I love people. I love shooting portraits and capturing people. And I do that in my portrait photography, excuse me, in my travel photography as well. So I, I mix people in my travel. Um, a lot of times people will come home from a trip and they come home with a bunch of pictures of empty buildings. And uh, I, while I do like the empty building shot, don't get me wrong, but I think it's the people that make the place. So I, I get to do uh, types of portraits, sometimes they're street portraits, sometimes they're regular portraits. Sometimes I hire a model on location. Uh, I've hired models in Rome and in, and in Paris and in Venice and, you know, so then you've got these amazing backdrops and then, you know, professionals that will pose for you and, and uh, stuff like that. So it's, it's, uh, it's a mixture. I can mix all the things that I love and kind of into one genre. So I'm going with travel. That's the long answer. You aren't just a photographer, right? What's Kelby One? Uh, so Kelby One is, it's an online educational community for photographers, Photoshop users, and people that use Lightroom. So um, it's very heavy photography based, uh, really is a kind of a, a learning resource for photographers. Uh, we have over 800 full length classes. And so, and it's a who's who, it's all the, all the wonderful people that you see here on B&H teaching uh, in Explorer. Uh, it's, it's great instructors, uh, we go on location. That's one of the things we do that's kind of cool. Like if we teach you uh, to shoot on safari, we go to Africa and we take a camera crew to Africa and you're right there beside the instructors while they're out there shooting in the wild. Uh, when we do a class on aviation photography, we're flying a squadron of 
warbirds off the coast with uh, one camera person in the chase plane with the photographer, uh, another in another plane. I mean, we go to extreme lengths, you know, to create uh, classes that, you know, people get really excited about. Uh, when we're shooting travel photography, we're on the streets of Paris. And uh, so stuff like that, we, we, we create those classes that, you know, you're just like, you're right there beside the photographer. That's the kind of our thing. What drew you to teaching about all things photo? Uh, I started as a Photoshop teacher. So I started teaching Photoshop back when Photoshop was at Photoshop 2.0, right before I went to 2.5. Taught my first Photoshop class and that kind of got me into it. Uh, I was a full-time professional graphic designer at the time. I'd been a photographer first, film photographer, hung up my photography gear, opened a graphic design business, did that for a while, and then came back full circle back to photography. Once, once digital really got big and I held my first actual DSLR, not one of those weird little, I remember the Nikon 990, the one that twisted like a little brick in like a Rubik's cube, not that. So when I held my first DSLR, it completely reignited my passion for photography, but that's kind of the, the whole thing of how it, uh, it came full circle. You work with so many different photographers. Do you feel like you're constantly learning new techniques from them? It's one of the best things about working with all these photographers. Yes, I'm learning stuff. I learned stuff today from the other teachers that are teaching at this conference. Um, I think that's one of the great things about photography. I don't think there's a point at which you just go, I know it all, I got this, you know. So I, I, I think that if you went to whoever your mentor is, whoever you love in photography and you say, hey, uh, I got a really cool tip on how to do whatever. They're not gonna go, eh, just keep it on. I already know everything about photography. The better photographer they are, the more they'll go, really, what do you got? We're, we're always hungry to learn new stuff and I think it's, it's what's so much fun. New gear comes out. I've gotta learn how to use my new camera. Uh, I wanna try my new camera on shooting new stuff. I mean, it's like, it's just, there's always something new and I think that, that makes it fun. It may not always be groundbreaking, but there's just, there's new software, there's new plugins, there's new lenses, there's new filters. I mean, on and on and on. So uh, I think it's, it, we're constantly learning. And I love that about photography. Do you have any projects you're working on or coming up? I'm always working on projects. Believe it or not, I just sent off to press a book. I write a lot of books. Um, I just sent off a book on iPhone photography. So what I did in this book was I'm teaching regular photography techniques, like how to make great portraits and control light and use scrims and do all this different stuff. But where the iPhone is your main camera, it's not like your secondary camera or your camera that goes, oh, I don't really, this is for people who are serious iPhoneographers. I made a photography book. And the only difference is the, the camera is an iPhone. So that just went to press. That's my, like my, my current project. And uh, today we just launched a, a new conference uh, coming up in March called the, uh, the Wildlife Photography Conference. So those are a couple of new projects that are, that are kind of fun. And uh, the Wildlife Conference, uh, if you want to go, and I hope that you do, uh, go over to kelby1live.com and up at the top, click on Wildlife Photography Conference. How have you been adapting to the pandemic? Uh, I, how have I been adapt? I mean, I've done, I think, pretty okay. I'm very, very lucky in that I have a job that I can mostly do from home, and that is just a huge blessing. Um, I am able to come to the office, uh, but we all do social distancing. I'm, I'm 10 to 20 feet from everybody there. I come into the office <laughs> masked up, and uh, when I leave this desk or when I leave any of our studios, we have like 11 studios here. When we leave any of them, of course, the mask goes on and we're masked up the whole time. So social distancing and masking at work, but we're not really at work. We only come in to do a project. We don't stay here all day. Most of us work from home. So that is, it, it's been a blessing to be able to do that for almost our whole team. Uh, but when we need to come together, like we did for this conference and stuff, you know, we do come together. We just, we just stay the heck away from each other. So I think I, I've adapted fairly well. I just miss traveling so much. I want to go everywhere. So that's where I'm at. You've traveled to some of the coolest places. What has been some of your favorites? Paris. You just, Paris is just such a neat place. And my, my friend Serge Romilly, who, who lived in Paris for 40 years, described it best, I think, when he said, the thing about Paris is each section of Paris can be so different from another section. Where a lot of cities, including in New York, and as much as I love New York, also one of my very favorite cities to shoot in, uh, a lot of New York looks the same. Uh, but Paris, is you can go from one segment to the other, it looks like you're in a different world. I mean, it is really, uh, you know, there's so many different areas of, 
of Paris and just different looks and different feels that, you know, you don't get tired of shooting it. It really is. There's a new thing around every other corner. So Paris is great. I love Venice. Venice is very much the same. Everywhere you look, it's a canal and a, and a gondola, but there's just such romance to, uh, to, to Italy in general. I think Italy is wonderful. I love Rome. I love Venice. I, I have a very fond place for Venice. I remember taking my little daughter there uh, when she was like two and being in St. Mark's Square and having her run and chase the pigeons and just, it just, it has a warm place in my heart. Um, uh, you know what? You can just drop a dot on any place in Europe and I want to go there. So, uh, but I, again, I, I love Japan. I love China. I, I just, I love travel. I love everywhere, but you make me choose one, it's Paris. So where is the first place you're going to once we can all safely travel? I have to go to Prague because I canceled my Prague workshop and everybody's waiting to go. Like as soon as it's back on, we're going to Prague. Uh, Prague is another wonderful city. Man, it's a photographer's paradise. I've been there, I know where to go. I, I have a great itinerary and a wonderful co-teaching partner, but it's from last year. We canceled it, of course, last April when we really couldn't go. And so I'm hoping to go sometime here summer maybe fall, but that's where I'm going. First stop, Prague. What has been one of the most challenging shoots ever? I was in New York. Uh, we rented um, a floor of the Metropolitan Building, which is uh, not the Metropolitan Insurance Company. It's a building uh, across the river in Queens. And uh, it is, uh, it is, it's an amazing place. A lot of photographers shoot there. And uh, we had three models, and we had hair, and we had makeup, we had all these ambitious plans. But there was one thing that I did not count on that, that was made it the hardest shoot I've probably ever done. Uh, we didn't realize that there was no air conditioning. And it, it was in that building with the windows open and everything, so miserably hot. It wasn't August, but it was like, it was like May or something. And it was just, we were just drenched in sweat. It was misery, it was exhausting. I didn't have enough assistance. Um, we were very assistant poor, which is my own fault. And it, it not having enough assistance really, I'll, I'll give you an example. The day started with one of the models walking in and said, well, where's my breakfast? And I'm like, it's 10.30 in the morning. And she's like, well, there should be a breakfast buffet. And I'm like, yeah, we don't have one. And I didn't have an assistant free to go send one. So I left the set and went and found her breakfast and brought it back. It's, you lose a lot of time when you don't have someone to go get stuff that you need. And uh, in hindsight, I would have had breakfast. And what is the coolest shoot you've done? Gosh, I've, I've gotten to do shoots like on rooftops in Paris. That was really neat. Uh, I'm gonna say my coolest shoot was in Guilin, China, getting to shoot these three uh, fishermen that are like literally in their 80s and 90s. Um, and they, uh, they, they still, they don't really fish this area anymore, but we get out there at dawn and getting there at dawn was, was we had to drive for hours in our car in the, through the night and then we had to hike and then we had to get on a boat that you would normally never risk your life getting on. And in the dark, it was like something out of a movie. It was just like, I mean, literally, it was like, I feel like, oh my gosh, I'm in a movie. And then we get on this little tiny island and you're out there and the sun starts coming up. Well, it's, you know, you're just starting to get that before sunrise look. And here come these fishermen, and uh, it was it was just to see it in person and stand there is just like, and and I was happy with the shots, and uh, it was just an amazing experience and an amazing morning, and one I'll never forget. Natural light or studio light? Uh, I'm going to go with studio light. Uh, natural light means you're a part-time photographer; <laughs> you can only shoot in the day. So uh, with with um, just you know, give me a nice pro photo head and. We can uh, we can make it look like a natural light, and uh, so I'm gonna go with I'm gonna go with studio light. Sunrise or sunset? Sunset, hands down, way way sunset. Here's why. Uh, sunrise, there's there's only a few advantages. Advantage number one is you'll get still water, right? The water will be still, or or if, if there's a chance of the water being still, it's gonna happen at dawn. Um, your light's gonna be nice. Um, and then right after you got breakfast. That's all I can come up with for pros for, for dawn. Sunset, oh my gosh. First off, you're not hiking around in the dark trying to get to your location, right? So you, you get to go in daylight. You're not gonna fall into a snake pit. Number two is the light is great before sunset. 
and then there's sunset and it's great. And then there's after sunset and it's even better. And then there's blue hour after that. You can shoot for much, much longer. Um, you've got, uh, you, can, you can get to your locations and plan your scout. You can see if it's gonna be a great night. You can see if the sky is gonna be full of clouds and beautiful or, or if there's not a cloud in the sky and you can just ditch it and go to dinner early. Uh, and the light is just absolutely beautiful. And so I'm gonna go with sunset every time. So many pros and only one con, which is you're gonna be eating dinner late. That's it. If you had to be a photographer or a filmmaker, which would you be? Oh, I'm 100% I'm photographer. I have a video button on my camera. They could disable it. I don't take any video with my camera whatsoever. Weird thing is, I take plenty of video with my iPhone. But that's like vacation photos. I don't consider those, like vacation photos are things that I want to remember about my trip. Travel photos are things that I want to share. I want to share online and share with other photographers. What's the best piece of advice you've ever received? The best piece of advice I have ever received, well, I'm going to give you one for photography and one for just life in general. Um, one for photography, Joe McNally told me this. What he didn't tell me was I was a, an instructor at a, at a workshop and he said this to the class. Um, he said a, a magazine editor at Life Magazine once told him, if you want to take more interesting pictures, stand in front of more interesting things. That had a real impact on me and really got me to invest in my travel and invest into going places, having the gear that I need, learning how to use it, and then going to places to, to make photos. Um, the best advice uh, in life was from my dad, which my dad said was very short and sweet, but it's, it's, it, it's big. And that is, you never go wrong by doing the right thing. And uh, that's proven itself time and times again. It's not always easy to do the right thing, but it always turns out to be the right thing. Aside from your camera, what's your favorite piece of gear? Aside from my camera, so I'm thinking you're saying camera body, right, Maria? Okay, how about, well, it would be my, one of my, my lens. I love to travel light for travel photography, and I'm going to go with my 24 to 240 lens for my mirrorless. Now, even though I just today got my R6, it's not my first Canon mirrorless. I had the Canon R, and uh, now I've upgraded to the R6, but that's the, uh, the uh, Canon does not make this for the, the full frame DSLR, it's only for the full frame mirrorless, and it allows me to have one lens on all the time. And 240 is a good range, but if I need to get to 300, I just crop it, doop, that little bit, and I'm at 300. So it's a, a great range, a great, uh, under a thousand bucks, and, uh, and um, uh, oh, it was one more thing, lightweight. Lightweight, small, so when I'm out traveling, doing street photography or traveling or whatever, I don't have to take my camera back. I just have my camera over my shoulder and, my, uh, and, my, and that camera and the lens, and that's it, I don't have to take a bag. So that's sweet. If there were to be a movie about your life, who would play you? Oh, well, I always think it has to be somebody that looks very much like you, right, to play, so it would absolutely be George Clooney. Hands down, it's a no-brainer, it's, 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 it's George Clooney. <laughs> And who should we interview next? Um, who should you interview next? Rick Salmon. Rick Salmon, you should interview Rick. Rick is a travel photographer, but he is a guy that is so full of photography and music. He's a very good musician. He graduated from the Berkeley School of Music. Uh, I find a lot of, I'm a musician as, as well. Uh, but uh, Rick is a very interesting guy and a very nice person. Like in our industry, I think he's really one of those guys that really tries to do good everywhere he goes. Uh, he loves people, he loves life. He's just happy and interesting. He's been everywhere and done everything. Interview Rick Sam and I bet it'll go awesome. Okay, switching it up a bit. What are some tips for someone wanting to get better at editing in Photoshop? Um, well, here's the thing. I think what it is, is you got to get good at camera raw, right? So camera raw is the, when you open up your raw photo, it, it's where it, the window opens automatically. But camera raw is not just for raw photos, it is also for JPEGs and for TIFFs and whatever you got. So it'll, it'll open but basically any file format that you're going to shoot a still in. Um, get good at that and all you have to really get good at is the basic panel. It's just a few sliders. If you get good at those sliders, you'll be able to make your images look fantastic. You don't have to be a Photoshop wizard. You don't have to do crazy special effects and stuff. Get really good at camera raw. Now, if you are a Lightroom user, the develop module of Lightroom is camera raw. 
It's the same sliders in the same order that do the exact same thing. They just have different names because that's what Adobe does. It's just... Anyway, but uh, get good at Lightroom's develop module, just the basic panel, or get good at Camera Raw's, just Camera Raw, the basic panel. It's just a few sliders, and they're sliders that make sense. They have names that make sense to us. Get good at that, and you will be. There will be no picture that you look at that you're not going to go, oh, I got this. It's, it's like eight sliders and you're there. It's like, get, get good at that and you've got it all. Okay, I'll let you get back to it. Thank you so much for answering all of my questions. Well, thank you, Maria. Thank you so much for, for having me. I enjoyed the questions very much. And uh, also, I hope to see a bunch of you at B&H's Depth of Field Conference. I'm one of the speakers there. Very excited about that. So, hope to catch you guys there. It's going to be a lot of fun. And thanks again, Maria. All right. See ya.